This is a story that happened in India, and if any of you heard me tell it uh, a year ago at Spiritual Renewal Week, I will tell it with a little more detail today. So <laughs> um, this is the story of Sumitra, who was uh, a, a maid in our home at Guru Kripa in Gurgaon, which was uh, the home that Swamiji bought and that we all lived in there together. Um, and she would come every day to clean the floors and do a few other little chores around the house, but mainly she just cleaned the floors. And this one particular day, she came, she spoke Bengali, by the way, she, her, her family origin was from Bengal somewhere or in that area. And so Swamiji would often greet her in Bengali and, and just casually, not that they would have much of a conversation, but he liked to sort of keep his Bengali moving a little bit. Anyway, this particular day she came and we could all tell immediately that something was wrong. She was not happy. Um, it was obvious she had been crying and, you know, just she was upset. And we didn't have the tools to understand how or why we couldn't speak Bengali. And Swamiji came down a few minutes later and also was aware that something was going on and spoke with her. And she explained to him that her little nephew, a baby, infant, had passed away unexpectedly and very tragically the day before, I think. And she was, you know, she was probably, she told us she was 16. She looked like she could have been 14. Anyway, whatever. She was obviously not, you know, a grown woman, but... Um, she was very disturbed. She was very upset by this. I think it might have been the first time she had ever encountered death, and it was upsetting to her naturally. And Swamiji was so kind to her. She, she sat at his feet. You know, it was one of these moments where there kind of aren't any rules around it. It's not a, a situation that is predictable or how do you handle a situation like this? I mean, he couldn't spend hours counseling her. He had a busy schedule in his own life. It wasn't appropriate for him to spend very long with her. But at the same time, he needed to be supportive and comforting to her. And he was, and he did. And I just remember she sat at his feet because she knew she had a few minutes somehow psychically, she just understood that she could sort of be with him in an unstructured way for a few minutes. And he used to wear these fluffy little slippers that, that were sort of furry. They weren't fur itself, but they were sort of fuzzy. And I just remember her petting the fur on his little slippers because it's like it, it, it was sort of absent-minded, but it was comforting to her to touch something that was so soft and, and kind of soothing in a way. And he just spoke to her very gently in Bengali. And I, you know, I didn't have Bengali. I didn't have any way to know what he said, but I could tell from the energy of what he said that he was just being very loving and, and at the same time helping her to understand that Things do happen. People do die unexpectedly. And, you know, it's, we have to find home inside. But I mean, how much could he really say in a moment like that? Anyway, when I told the story a year ago, um, I was not, I got, I myself got very choked up remembering this because it was a very touching thing to see him be that way with her. Um, what I wanted to say and what I couldn't say because I got caught up in the story is the punchline of the story to me was that we are all of us, every one of us are Sumitra in this world. She was a young girl, you know, in, in the social scheme of things, occupying a very low rung. She wasn't untouchable, obviously, but I mean, she was there in our home, but, you know, floor cleaners don't occupy a, a high station in life. But Swamiji was respectful to her. 
But we are all of us Sumitra because we've all lost something very, very precious in this world. We've lost our peace of mind. We've lost people who are dear to us. We've lost certainty or whatever it may be. We may feel that we've failed in life in one way or another. And that comforting presence that Swamiji represented to her and gave to her very freely is a presence that we can access in our moments of distress and discouragement and and when we don't understand. But the other aspect of this is that we are all of us also Swami Kriyananda because this world is full of Sumitras and some of them are part of our immediate world. And when those kinds of situations come up, it's our job to be of comfort to them and to act in that role as, a, as the voice or the heart of God speaking because we need that human contact. Otherwise, this world just seems so random and some, in some ways... I mean, there's a reason why Krishna said, get away from my ocean of suffering and misery. We need to. And he knew it was an ocean of suffering and misery. And so we have to learn in ourselves to, to offer that to people as the situations arise in our lives. So anyway, those were two little stories that I wanted to share. And I, there are, are hundreds and thousands more that I could share. <laughs> so maybe I'll pass it back to Nirmala. So I'll tell you another story about Swami. And he was, as you know, incredibly creative. And there was a, a period of time in the mid-80s in which he maybe a little earlier than that. Anyway, sometime in the 80s, he decided to do a series of concerts at Crystal Hermitage, where his house is. And these concerts were outside in the garden, which is now famous because uh, there's the Tulip Festival every year. And um, many thousands of people come to see his beautiful garden that's just a jewel. And so in those days, we would set up uh, by the swimming pool, and there's a beautiful balustrade looking out over the national forest that's all around that property. And he would uh, do different kinds of concerts. There was an evening in India, was one of the concerts. And for that one was particularly astral. It was just a heavenly evening. And he sang many classical songs in Bengali and uh, just Sanskrit chants. He would have me play the tambura and the kirtals and uh, Lewis Howard would play the tabla. Who, and he's very, very good at it. So these evenings were just as I say, heavenly. It's hard to even describe in words. This sort of intimate setting, we would put chairs around the, there's a little stage there, and um, with all the flowers and all the trees, and the lighting was heavenly. We'd have candles floating in the pool. It was just very, very special. And it didn't happen very often. It may have happened just one summer or possibly two summers where different Saturday nights, three or four Saturday nights in a season would happen. 
And I tell this story primarily because it was fascinating to me that more people from Ananda didn't come. We would have maybe 30 people, maybe 50 people, but there were many more people living at Ananda that, oh, they were tired from the week and they couldn't make it over the hill to come from where they lived over to Crystal Hermitage. It was a long walk. (laughs) And I think back on what we would give, any of us would give now to have an evening with Swami like that. He would tell some stories, he would um, sing beautifully, and the being there with him in that kind of way was just divine. And having been involved in those concerts and learning those lessons of you really have to put out energy if you want to be with the guru, if you want to be in that kind of vibration, and then you get the blessings from it. I remember, I remembered that lesson, and then years later, I think it was maybe 1999, we were working for Swami in Crystal Clarity, and he was living in Ananda Sisi. We were in America, he was in Italy. But we kept working and we, together and we kept in constant contact by phone. And we were in a little different time zone, so we would often work very late at night so that we could be available to him uh, when he was working during the day. So I remember he was very tired. He was exhausted from all the work that he'd been doing. And one of these phone calls, Dharmadas and I were talking with him, and we felt inspiration to try to help him take a vacation or just get some rest. And so we just felt inspired and said, Swami, we'll take you anywhere you want to go. Anywhere in the world we'll take you. Just so you can get rejuvenated. And he said, well, let me think about it. And it's a very kind offer, but let's see. He knew we didn't have much money at all. But we had plastic money. We had a credit card and we knew how to use it. So we were a little nervous to see where he would want to go, but it was completely overridden by our deep longing to help. And so he said, let's, let's take a little trip to Switzerland. So we had to get ourselves over to Europe and we had to get the three of us up to Switzerland and into a nice place to stay. But it wasn't terribly expensive. He was very circumspect in where he chose to take us. But that trip was very, very beautiful and very special. And I'll maybe tell you about that another time. But the point that I wanted to make with that is that we were a little nervous because it was many thousands of dollars And we didn't make that much money. We were just on an Ananda salary. And I was taking care of the finances in those days, paying all the bills and and all of that. 
And it's still a mystery to me because even though it was many thousands of dollars, it never caused a ripple in our finances. We received extra money from this source and that source. I, I just can't tell you how it all worked out. But it was perfectly fine. We never had a problem. It all just magically got paid. And I tell you that story because, first of all, it's important to put out energy to do the things that will uplift you spiritually. And they are very often things that cost money, that take energy, that are a difficult journey. But if you do that tapasya, if you do that little bit of sacrifice, a little bit of extra effort and willpower and desire to learn and change and grow, then the boon that you receive is so powerful that whatever you've gone through seems like absolutely nothing in comparison to what you receive. And so be inspired to strive for the highest, to put out the energy, and you will find great benefit.